Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to the next video on digital signal processing. In this video, we are going to discuss the impulse response of a second order system. The given system is a discrete time system. So uh, let me take a pen from here and uh, I will move to the full screen mode. So it is it is very much visible to you. OK, so here the system which is given is a y of n, 1 by 2 y of n minus 1, 1 by 4 y of n minus 2 plus x of n. Here, y of n is the output and x of n is the input. We have to determine the system function, find out the poles and zeros of the system, find out the impulse response. We have to comment on the stability. And from everything, we have to reserve, we have to uh, perform the MATLAB programming with plot of h of n and zero, pole zero plot to verify the res this result. So in this video, we will solve the numerical and in the next video, uh, we will go for a numerical based on this. So this is a given system function. Uh, so I want the take the inverse Z of this first. So I will I will take the inverse Z transform. So first I'm performing the inverse Z transform. So inverse Z transform of this Y of N is a Y of Z. Okay, it is 1 by 2, it, y of n minus 1 is, it is delayed by one sample, it is z less to minus 1 into y of z plus 1 by 4, it is a y of n minus 2 that is delayed by two samples, since it is 1 by 4 z less to minus 2 y of z plus x of n, if in, you, uh, by applying the z transform, it is x of z. So combining the terms of y of z, so if I combine the terms of y of z in bracket, what is remaining? 1 minus 1 by 2 z raised to minus 1 y of z. Sorry, y of z we have taken as a common. So plus, sorry, again it is a minus 1 by 4 z raised to minus 2 is equal to x of z. Uh, we know that the system function h of z is equal to y of z upon x of z. So, <clears throat> from the above equation, we will get 1 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 z raised to minus 1 plus, sorry, minus minus 1 by 4 z raised to minus 2. So in this equation, so we will get these values or I can rearrange this equation further. So 1 divided by 1 minus 0.5 z raised to minus 1 minus 0.25 z raised to minus 2. So this is my the system function which was asked in the first uh, part. In the second part, we have to find out the poles and zeros of the systems. So whatever the values of h of z, first I will write down that values of h of z. h of z is given as 1 divided by 1 minus 0.5 z raised to minus 1 minus 0.25 z raised to minus 2. Okay, to this term, I will multiply with the z square and divide it by z square. I am multiplying z square because here it is a z raised to minus 2. I want to cancel out the z raised to minus 2. That is the highest order, negative highest order in the denominator. So, so that I have multiplied with the positive order. So, 1 divided, then it will become z square divided by, so z square minus 0.5 z raised to minus 1 multiplied by z square, it will give you 0.5 z minus 0.25 z raised to minus 2 and z raised to minus 2 will uh, z raised to square z square will cancel with each other so i will get this term now uh, in a numerator we have z square in denominator we have a second order equations so to find out the roots of the second order equations so the, the, which is called as a pole so p1 and p2 can be determined as minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a in this case, what is the value of A? A is equal to 1, B is equal to minus 0.5 and C is equal to minus 0.25. If I solve this, uh, then I will get the equation, I will get the two factors of this denominator, which is Z minus 
point eight zero nine zero. Okay, one pole is uh, z is equal to point eight zero nine zero. So its uh, factor is z minus uh, zero point eight zero nine zero, and one factor is z plus point three zero nine zero. If we analyze this equation, so here we have a two zero. Okay, in this system we have a two zeros. Both are located at z is equal to zero. So both are located at z is equal to zero. In this system, because numerator have a second order, uh, we have two poles. How? What is a zero? Zero means where value values of this h of z is going to the zero, and two poles where value of this h of z is going to infinite. There are the two poles. One pole is located at point. Eight zero nine zero, and another pole is located at minus point three zero nine zero. So we got two poles and two zeros in this system. Now we have to determine the impulse response of the system. To determine the impulse response of the system, so first I will write down whatever the value of h of z we determined in the previous step. It is z square divided by. Z minus point eight zero nine zero. Z plus point three zero nine zero. So I will rearrange this equation such that I will transfer this Z square one of the Z on this side. So here only one Z will remain in the numerator divided by Z minus point eight zero nine zero. Z plus point three zero nine zero. So we will apply the partial fraction to this. So to separate out the uh, factors in the denominator, Z minus point three zero sorry eight zero nine zero, and another one is B divided by Z plus point three zero nine zero. Now we have to find out the values of a and b. So to get the value of a, we will take equation z divided by so z plus point three zero nine zero, where I will substitute z is equal to point eight zero nine zero. If I substitute this, I will get the first value of the a as point seven two three six. Similarly, if I go for a b, so b is equal to z divided by z minus point eight zero nine zero, where I will substitute z is equal to minus point three zero nine zero. Then I will get this value as point two seven six four. So I got the values of a and b. So uh, this is the equation of h of z by z. So I will transfer that z on uh, other side. So uh, I will get point seven two three six z divided by z minus point eight zero nine zero. And what another term we will get? It is a point two seven six four z divided by z plus point. Three zero nine zero. Now we know that for a causal sequence, in the sequence the problem is given as a causal. Uh, for a raised to n u of n, if you take the z transform, then it is z divided by z minus a. Okay, that means the z divided by z minus a. If we take the inverse z transform, then I will get the value a raised to n u of n. So here. We will apply that to get the impulse response. So h of n. So I will take inverse z over here. So taking the inverse z transform. So h of n is equal to point seven two three six. So applying this function over here. So you can compare the value of a is equal to point eight zero nine zero. So it's point eight zero nine zero raised to n u of n. Plus, then point two seven six four. Here, the value of a will be minus zero point three zero nine zero. So it's minus zero point three zero nine zero raised to n 
u of n. You can represent this h of n by taking u of n as a common term as 0.7236 into 0 0.8090 raised to n plus 0.2764 multiplied by minus 0 0.3090 raised to n. So we can represent this uh, using this. So this is what impulse response of the system. Now coming to the next part, we want to determine the stability of the system. So how we can determine the stability of the system? For stability, I have to draw the Z plane first. So to draw the Z plane, uh, I will take the uh, I will draw the X axis first here. Okay, then I will go for one more time. Sorry. I will take just a minute, it is not copying from here. Okay, so I will take this one. Okay, so on this axis, uh, there are real values of Z. On this axis, I will take the imaginary values of Z. So, and I am drawing the one unit circle. So, unit circle means whose radius is equal to 1. So, here is the unit circle. Sorry. I have taken this square. So I will take this unit circle. So okay. Let me arrange on the line so it is it is symmetrical on all sides. So uh, unit circle means what is in this unit circle this radius is equal to 1. Now what are the zeros of the system there are two zeros at the location origin. So there are two zeros at this location. There are two poles. One pole is at 0 0.8090 on positive side. So one pole is here. And another pole is at minus 0 0.3090. So another pole is here. So you can observe all poles are inside the unit circle. All poles are inside unit circle. Okay. As all poles are lies inside the unit circle, system is stable. Okay. If any one pole is going outside the unit circle, then the system will become unstable. So here uh, we have studied the some numerical based on the impulse response of a second order system and how to find out the stability. In the next problem, uh, we are going to see in the next session, we are going to see how to solve this using the MATLAB program. Thank you.